you find people that will complete the course. So you might fall behind and say, you know what, well it's being stored in the Inflix library, so I'll just watch it later. I don't have to worry about it right now, I'll watch it later. And I guarantee you, you won't watch all of it. So, you know, I'm, I'm advising you all from now, this class in particular is a class in which you really have to stay the course. Um, as we go through this class tonight, I'm just introducing the concept. I'm just introducing what Qiyamul Layl and Tahajjud is and what makes it so special. Uh, you know, starting from next week onward, we're going to start talking about the hows and whens of Qiyamul Layl. And, you know, we'll start to develop more technique, inshallah ta'ala. But really just introducing this amazing ibadah uh, tonight. So you really have to stay the course, inshallah. And the tuition of this class, there is tuition for this class. The tuition of this class is that you have to pray two rak'ahs after class every single week. And you have to make du'a for me. Alright? That's the tuition. And for everyone that's involved in this project, bin Allah ta'ala. You have to pray two rak'ahs every single week. I don't care if you pray in the masjid, those of you that are here before you leave. And those of you that are at, in your homes, I hope you're not laying down or, or reclining as you're watching. I hope you're sitting at a desk or something. As soon as the class is over, then stand up inshallah ta'ala and pray uh, two rak'ahs. Now, just to introduce this concept, you know, the first question that I got when I was, when, when I was actually putting the title off for this class is, what's the difference between Qiyamul Layl and Tahajjud? I got asked that question like 20 times. What's the difference between Qiyamul Layl and Tahajjud? Aren't they the same thing? And I wanted to actually clear that misconception from the start because it actually applies to those, especially those who are, you know, who are up at 3, 4 a.m. right now in their countries tuning in. Qiyamul Layl, linguistically, although it means standing linguistically, Qiyam means to stand, standing in the night, although it means standing linguistically, it was understood by the ulama to mean all forms of worship throughout the night. All forms of worship are included in Qiyamul Layl. Okay? Salatul Layl, which is the prayer of the night, which the Prophet ﷺ sometimes specified. Salatul Layl obviously is referring specifically to prayer. Okay? And the word tahajjud, which a lot of people think comes from, think comes from the word jihad, doesn't actually come from the word jihad. The word tahajjud comes from the word hujud, hajada hujud in the Arabic language. And the linguistic meaning of that means doing the opposite of something. All right, doing opposites. Now, why would it be called tahajjud? Because in essence, you go to sleep and then you wake up. Okay, so you do the opposite of what you were doing a, meaning, a, a moment ago. Hajada, you woke up and you started to pray after you were laying like a dead person. Okay, so you're doing the opposite. And that's why some of the ulama, like Ibrahim al-Nafa'i, rahimahullah ta'ala, Alqama, Ikrama, okay, these scholars in particular, these three, Ibrahim al-Nafa'i, Alqama, and Ikrama, they said that tahajjud is not just praying at night. Tahajjud is specifically going to sleep and then waking up and praying. Alright, so it's a greater reward, which is obviously what the Prophet ﷺ used to do. Now, anything that you do from Salatul Isha and even from Salatul Maghrib, according to some of the scholars, counts as Qiyamul Layl. Okay? But Tahajjud is specifically going to sleep and waking up, which obviously requires greater determination, which is the harder part, which is what we should strive for. And of course, the word Taraweeh. Uh, which we use in Ramadan refers to it comes from raha comes from the break the word break because the Prophet ﷺ used to take breaks between uh, the, the Qiyam and Ramadan when he would pray Qiyam and Ramadan in particular now before we even start talking about this prayer what's so unique about al -Layl? before we talk about the Qiyam let's talk about the nighttime you know the nighttime has a very special place in Islam and unfortunately you know we're deluded because of all the artificial lighting that we have around us it's not supposed to be this light right now Okay? Nighttime in Islam is very special and it does affect our ibadah. And Imam ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah said, it is the greatest distinguishing factor between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not sleep, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forces us to sleep. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala la yanam. He doesn't sleep. The Prophet sallallahu he said in an authentic hadith narrated by Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said, Inna Allah la yanam wa la yanbaghi lahu an yanam. Allah doesn't sleep and it's not befitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to sleep. And this hadith is in Sahih Muslim. And he said, rather Allah raises the scale and then he lowers it. And the Prophet said, the deeds of the day are presented to Allah in the night 
and the deeds of the night are presented to Allah in the day. So Allah doesn't sleep at night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at our deeds for the day. And then whenever the day comes, Allah looks at our deeds for the night. And I remember my shaykh, when, he, when we were studying the, the sharh of this hadith in Muslim, he said, subhanAllah, how many, you know, when our records go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the night, how many of us have anything to present to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I mean, can you imagine your record of good deeds goes to Allah for the night and you have zero, you have nothing that you've done? And, and truly, let's think about this. If we combine all the time we've spent watching movies at night, watching sports at night, okay, hanging out at night, and we take all of that and we compare it to the amount of time we've dedicated to praying at night, which one is going to outweigh the other? So just think about that. Visualize your scroll going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every morning. And if you haven't prayed Qiyam al you have nothing to show for yourself that night. Okay? So the number one distinguishing factor, and that's why one of the ibadat, one of the acts of worship at night is to recite which ayah? Ayat al-Kursi. Allahu la ilaha illa hu al hayyul qayyum la ta'khudhu sinatu wa la While we're going to sleep, we're saying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no God besides Him. He is not overcome by any form of drowsiness or any form of sleep. Allah doesn't sleep. You're going to sleep and you're saying, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't sleep. Okay, so that's the first thing, that Allah doesn't sleep, but we do. جَعَلَ نَوْمَكُمْ سُبَاتَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the sleep overcome us, like some of you are being overcome by sleep right now. Alright? But the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extends His hand during the day in a way that's befitting to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yabsul, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said He extends His hand bin naha. Okay? So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could accept the forgiveness, so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would accept the repentance and forgive those who ask for it during the night. And Rasulullah sallallahu said, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extends His hand during the night so that He could accept the repentance of those that asked for it during the day. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always is, is giving us the opportunity to seek forgiveness. But what is so special about the night is it's the only time that the Prophet ﷺ said in the authentic hadith of Abu Hurairah عنه, in Sahih al-Bukhari that our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala descends yanzilu in a way that's befitting to His Majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala without any form of tashbih, without any form of human likening to that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends every last third of the night. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Man yas'aluni fa'a'tiyah Who is going to ask me so I can give him? Man yad'uni fa'astajiba lah Who is going to ask, who is going to make dua to me so that I can answer his supplication? Man yastaghfiruni fa'aghfira lah Who is going to seek forgiveness from me so that I can forgive him? And the Prophet sallallahu said, look how merciful Allah is. The Prophet sallallahu said, Allah keeps saying this over and over until fajr. So the entire third of the night, the last third of the night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling on to you from the very beginning. And that's an authentic hadith from Abu Huraira narrated by Abu Dawood. And I'm going to give you guys the sources for all of the ahadith because some of these ahadith you might go, wow, you know, that doesn't make sense. So I'm going to keep on giving you the sources so that your hearts can be comforted inshaAllah ta'ala. We also see from Amr ibn Abbasa radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And this is an authentic hadith in Ibn Majah. That he said, I asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is there any hour of the night that is closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than another? And the Prophet sallallahu said, Na'am jawfu layl al awsat. Okay, the last hour of the night is the closest that a servant can possibly be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is nothing greater than that. And so imagine Allah is coming and asking us if we want to ask Him. How amazing is that? And subhanAllah, you know, we find if we, if we study hadith literature, we find that even the animals know to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at this time. Even the animals get it, but the human beings don't. Humans are sleeping. But listen to this amazing hadith. This hadith is narrated in Sunan an Nasa'i from Abu Dhar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, and he was, he, was, he, had a, he was on a horse sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he tapped the horse. And he said, there is no horse except that at the end of the night, it makes dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can you imagine? Even the horse, the Prophet is saying, not a single horse misses the opportunity 
to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and says, Allahumma khawaltani man khawaltani min bani Adam. Oh Allah, you entrusted me to whoever you entrusted me to from the children of Adam. وَجَعَلْتَنِي لَهُ And you made me his. فَجْعَلْنِي أَحَبَّ أَهْلِهِ وَمَالِهِ إِلَيْهِ So make me the most beloved of his family and of his wealth to him. And that's why the Arabs love their horses more than they love their children. You know, subhanAllah. The horses actually make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that time. And obviously, لَا تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِيحَهُمْ As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the heavens and the earth, when they make tasbih, when they, de when they declare the glory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you don't understand it. They do it in a way that's befitting to them. But even the animals understand that. And again, this is every night. So a lot of times we try to specify nights. And obviously there are nights throughout the year that are specified. But the Prophet said, for example, he, he heard, and this is in Sahih Muslim from Abu Huraira The Prophet said, don't choose Friday night, Laylatul Jum'ah, <coughs> amongst all the other nights for tahajjud. Don't choose that night and think that's the only night I should pray the Yamul Okay? And Rasulullah said, and don't choose Friday amongst any, all the other days for fasting, unless you're accustomed to that. So don't assign certain nights of the week. This is something that takes place every single night. And Imam Ibn Rajab, rahimahullah, he comments on that. And he says that, O oh, you who is at the door of the kings, the king of all kings is calling upon you. You're not calling Allah. The king of all kings is calling upon you. And you're running to these little kings and asking them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the king of all kings, is telling you, ask me. And Ibn Rajab rahimahullah said, how would it be when your sick child called you? You know, at night, if a child is sick and a child had a fever, how quickly do you wake up and abandon your bed? How would it be if your mother called upon you and asked for some, some, some form of nourishment? How quickly would you get up? But the Lord of all the worlds calls upon you honors you with calling upon you by name every single night and you don't respond to them. And Al-Fudayl ibn Ayyad rahimahullah ta'ala he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends at the end of every night, the last third of every night and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says كَذَبَ مَنِ الدَّعَى مَحَبَّتِي فَإِذَا جَنَّهُ اللَّيْلُ نَامَ عَنِّي أَلَيْسَ كُلُّ مُحِبٍ يُحِبَّ خَلْوَةَ حَبِيبٍ very, very powerful words. And it's not a hadith. I've heard some people always pre present it as a hadith. It's not a hadith. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He has denied my love, or He has lied about loving me. When the night comes to Him, and He sleeps while I'm calling upon Him. And isn't it that every single lover secludes himself with his lover at night? You know, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, you can't truly say, that you love him if you're not even going to wake up at night when he calls you. And subhanAllah, responding to that call is something that makes it emotional and it personalizes your relationship with Allah. And I think that's the failure of Qiyamul Layl. We're only thinking how much ajr do we get if we wake up for Qiyamul Layl. And that's not enough to wake you up. But knowing that Allah is calling you and you're not answering. You know, can you imagine if you're getting a phone call and you're not answering that phone call in the middle of the night and it's someone that important, who's more important than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And for that, Habiba al adawiya rahimahullah ta'ala, she used to stand on her roof at night and she used to pray. And her husband said that one time I heard what she was saying. And he said she started off her dua and she said, Ilahi, my Lord, gharat al nujum the stars have come out, wa namat al and the eyes have slept, wa ghallaqat al muluk abwabaha, and the kings have shut their doors, wa babuka maftuh. But your door is open. And every lover is with their lover. And this is me standing with you tonight. SubhanAllah. That's the way she introduced it. Abu Dhar al Ghifari, I'm sorry, Abu Darda, Abu Darda also, he used to stand up at night and a smile used to come on his face. His wife said that a smile used to come on his face. Abu Darda says, as if he was getting excited. And subhanAllah, it was as if he had just received the greatest news of his life. He hasn't even started praying yet. And he would say, Namatil Ayyun, wa gharatil nujum, wa antal hayyul qayyum. The eyes have shut and the, and, and the stars have come out, and you are the ever living and the one, al qayyum, the one who's consistently sustaining the universe. SubhanAllah. 
I mean, this is the way that they, that they came out. And I want you to think about this. What are two surahs that the Prophet ﷺ always read before he slept? Let's take away the quls. And we'll talk about the afkar of the layl, the remembrances of the night, inshallah ta'ala, next week. You know, but we'll take away that. Take away ayat al-kursi. Take away the last two ayat of Surah al-Baqarah. There are two longer surahs that the Prophet ﷺ read every single night. What are they? Not Surah Al-Waqi'ah. There are two in particular. Surah Al-Mulk and Surah Al-Sajda. Surah Al-Waqi'ah is from Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Surah Al-Mulk and Surah Al-Sajda. As narrated in Bukhari, the Prophet ﷺ never slept, slept without reading Surah Al-Mulk and Surah Al-Sajda. And you know what's amazing about that? Both of those surahs mention Qiyam al Both of those surahs that we read at night have a mention of Qiyam al And they address different aspects of the night, what would keep a person sleeping. So obviously what would keep a person sleeping at night, number one is that he wants to sleep. His shahwat. Or that he wants to be well rested, his desires. He wants to be well rested for his dunya, to pursue his dunya tomorrow. Or he didn't feel a great enough connection to wake up. So it was his shahwat that hold him back. And sleep is a shahwa, sleep is a desire. And that's why in Surah Al-Sajda, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, تَتَجَافَ جُنُوبُهُمْ عَنِ الْمَضَاجِرِ They fight with their sides, they fight their beds. Literally, they're fighting with their sides to get up out of their bed. يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ خَوْفًا وَطَمَعًا Calling out to their Lord in hope and in fear. And actually in fear and in hope, because the ulama say that fear would make you wake up more than hope. You know, hope, you're, you're anticipating something, you can still sleep at night. But when you're afraid, you will wake up. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fadl al-khawf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preferred fear to hope in regards to qiyam al So they stand up calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in fear and in hope, fighting with their sleep, fighting with their beds. وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ And this is really amazing here, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, And from what we gave to them, they spent. Allah connected sadaqa with qiyam, charity with qiyam. And there's no fundraiser tonight, inshaAllah ta'ala. But the next, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also does this in Surah Al-Dariyat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا يَهْجَعُونَ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ وَفِي حَقٌّ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they used to sleep little of the night. And then they used to seek forgiveness at the end, a sahab right before Fajr. <coughs> and then during the day, they would spend upon those who were asking and upon those who were deprived from asking. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala connected sadaqah with qiyam. And the beauty of that connection is that once a, per a person has tasted the sweetness of a ta'alluq, of being connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they automatically diminish their appetite for this dunya. And so they find it easier to give from this dunya whenever they wake up, whenever they come out in the day. I mean, I've just spent time talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and requesting the akhirah. Who cares about this money? Right? So automatically their appetite for dunya starts to diminish. And Ibn Daqiq al-Eid, Ibn Daqiq al-Eid, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, and how can you read this verse and not pray at night when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the reward for it right after this? What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ مِنْ قُرَّةِ أَعْيُنْ جَزَاءً بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ And so no person knows what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stored for them. قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنْ The coolness of their eyes. جَزَاءً بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ As a reward for that which they used to do. بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ يَعْنِي قِيَامُ اللَّيْهِ And what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about what they used to do, He's talking about their qiyam. Right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you the reward for it. So Ibn Daqiq, he said that how can a person not want to wake up when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells them what the reward is right after. Allah didn't even leave the, the reward, you know, a, 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 a secret. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that I will give you something that you can't even imagine. Right? Jaza'an bima kanu ya'malun. And Abu Hazm, rahimahullah ta'ala, the great tabi'i, he used to say, Ajibtu min al-jannah. I am amazed by jannah. How could the one who's requesting it go to sleep at night? And I'm amazed by hellfire. How can the one who is running away from it, trying to flee it, go to sleep at night? It doesn't make any sense. You're asking for something greater than anything. I mean, imagine if, if tomorrow you had the greatest business opportunity in your life presenting itself, presenting itself to you. 
how, how excited you would be. This might change your life forever. You might make some money tomorrow that will change your life forever. How, how would you sleep at night? And imagine if you had a doctor's appointment in the morning and you, had advanced, uh, you were at an advanced stage of cancer and you were going to find out tomorrow if you had any more time to live. How can you go to sleep? Right? So these things should keep us up at night. And that's why uh, the Prophet ﷺ, particularly when he talked about Al-Qur'an, Al-Qur'an, how it takes away a shahwat it takes us away from our desires. Rasulullah ﷺ said in a hadith in Sunan Ibn Majah, it's an authentic hadith from Ibn Buraydah, that the Prophet ﷺ, he said, يَجِيءُ الْقُرْآنُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ That the Qur'an will come on the Day of Judgment, like a pale man. I mean, everything on the Day of Judgment becomes human as far as deeds are concerned. Rasulullah said, imagine when the Qur'an comes to you on the Day of Judgment in the form of a man and says, I'm the one that used to keep you up at night. And I'm the one that used to keep you thirsty during the day. I'm the one that kept you up at night. The Qur'an naturally is supposed to keep us up at night. And in fact, the Prophet ﷺ, he said in another hadith, um, from Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu in Sahih Muslim that وَإِذَا قَامَ صَاحِبُ الْقُرْآنِ that whenever the one who memorizes Qur'an uh, stands up at night فَقَرَأَهُ بِاللَّيْلِ and he reads it at night Allah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says that he would be able to remember it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would allow him to commit it to his memory وَإِذَا لَمْ يَقُمْ بِهِ نَسِيَ and if he doesn't stand up with it at night, Allah takes, away, takes it away from him. He will forget it. So the only way to even commit the Qur'an to your memory is to really stand up at night and pray with it. So it's a cure from a shahwat from desires. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that in Surah Al-Sajdah. So that's one surah we read at night. Then Allah addresses the other aspect of it in Surah Al-Mulk. And by the way, Surah Al-Mulk is really amazing because the Prophet ﷺ, he said that the reward for reciting Surah Al-Mulk at night is what? Protection from what? Adab al qabr the punishment of the grave. Subhanallah, for just sacrificing five minutes of your life every single night reading Surah Al-Mulk, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow you to rest in peace in the true sense of the word all the way until the Day of Judgment. Deprive yourself of five minutes of sleep every night and Allah will let you sleep in peace until the Day of Judgment whenever you go to your grave. What an exchange. And obviously in Surah Al-Mulk, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Tabaraka alladhi bi yadihi al-mulk wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created death and life. لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنْ وَعَمَلًا So that He could test you who amongst you will be the most righteous in their deeds. So there is a mention of life and death. And where is the mention of قِيَامُ اللَّيْهِ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَخْشَوْنَ رَمْبَهُمْ بِالْغَيْبِ Verily those that fear their Lord in the unseen لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ وَأَجْرٌ كَبِيرٌ They will have forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a great reward. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning the cure from riyah, the cure from showing off to people. Because these people fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even when they're all alone, even when they're absent and nobody sees them except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They, they know Allah is watching them so they, fear, so they fear Him. And subhanAllah, you know, this is something very significant because this is the opposite of the hypocrites. The hypocrites are people, as Rasulullah said in the hadith of Thawban radiallahu anhu, that whenever they're alone with the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with, with those things that are made haram, then they, they freely you know, use them, they freely make use of those prohibitions. They don't care because they're all alone and no one sees them. The opposite of that, which is one who's sincere, the sincere believer, is that his secrets are actually good. The things he's hiding from people is actually good. So subhanAllah, we find that uh, you know, Rasulullah mentioned amongst the people that would be shaded on the day of judgment, the seven that are shaded, the day when there is no shade except for the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rajulun Dakar Allah Khali, a person who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while he's all alone, and his eyes become uh, full of tears. Okay, so it, the, the criteria here is that he's all alone, that no one else sees him. He remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his alone time. Uh, Sufyan al-Thawri rahimahullah ta'ala, the great Imam, uh, one time a guest came to visit him and his wife, you know, let the guest in and she said that he's in, he's in the room and whenever the guest came to the room, he saw Sufyan al-Thawri rahimahullah crying and he said, يَنْظُرُ إِلَىٰ سَقَفِ الْغُرْفَةِ He would look up to the roof of his room 
and he kept on reciting am yahsabuna anna la nasma'u sirrahum wa najwahum bala wa rusuluna ladayhum yaktubun do they really think that we don't hear their secrets we don't hear their secrets and and, and their impulses and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says bala verily our messengers are writing and he said that Sufyan would recite this verse over and over again and say, Bala ya Rabb, Bala ya Rabb, yes, O oh our Lord. I know, I know. And Imam al Tustari, rahimahullah ta'ala, and this is narrated by Imam ibn Qudam, he said that my uncle taught me a dua to say at night as a young man. My uncle taught me to say this as a young man. Um, he said, Say whenever you're going to sleep, Allahu ma'i, Allahu shahidi, Allahu nawirun ilayhi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ma'i, Allah is with me Allah is witnessing me Allah is watching me So he said, my uncle told me as a young man Keep on saying, Allahu ma'i, Allahu shahidi, Allahu nadirun ilayhi That Allah is with me, Allah is witnessing me And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching me And he said, so I kept on saying it Hatta wajadtu halawata Until I tasted the sweetness of that Until I understood what my uncle was trying to teach me So this was the opposite of the hypocrites And that's why when we read the hadith, for example, where the Prophet ﷺ said that praying Salat al-Isha in jama'ah, in congregation, is equivalent to the first half of the night in prayer. And praying Fajr in congregation is equivalent to the second half of the night in prayer. And subhanAllah, you might wonder why. And the reason being is that the Prophet ﷺ said these two prayers are the hardest on the munafiqeen, on the hypocrites. And it's not because of their sleep habits. It's because no one could be seen at Fajr and Isha. It was pitch black. It was pitch black. So they had no desire to come to the masjid for Fajr and Isha when they weren't even going to be seen. And that's why the Prophet said in an authentic hadith in Muslim Imam Ahmad, Bashir al Masha'ina fi Dhulmi ila al Masajid, that give glad tidings to those who used to walk to the masjid at night, bi nurin tamma, with a complete light, yawm al Qiyam, on the Day of Judgment. They will have complete light on the Day of Judgment. Because this was a form of Qiyam al Layl. Think about it, the Prophet ﷺ used to delay Isha. And we'll talk about this next week, inshallah ta'ala, how much he would delay it at times. But he'd delay it way into the night. And Abdullah ibn Umar anhu says, the Prophet ﷺ used to pray Fajr with us when it was dark. When it was very dark. So really this was a form of Qiyam al in congregation when they would come together. And Abdullah ibn Umar anhu says that Uthman anhu delayed the Fajr to when it became bright, when Umar ibn Khattab anhu was assassinated. Then Uthman actually delayed Salat al-Fajr, obviously within that which was permissible in the window of Fajr. But the Prophet ﷺ was praying at night, and they were coming in the middle of the night to come and pray. And in fact, Anas ibn Malik anhu, he says that, and this is a beautiful hadith, amazing hadith, and it's narrated in the Bukhari. This isn't like a story or a fable. Anas ibn Malik, and it's been narrated 18 times by the way. He said that two of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ one time walked with him, to Salatul Isha. And then they walked back. And they had in front of them two lights that were like lamps. Each one of them had a light. And it was lighting the way in front of them. And whenever they parted, each one of them continued to be accompanied by that nur, by that light, until they returned to their homes. SubhanAllah. Allah actually gave them physically a nur, a light, as they were walking in the darkness of the night. And this obviously was a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure with them. And that's why Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah, when he was asked, he said, why is it? And, and actually they said, oh Abu Sa'id, they were talking to him, his kunya was Abu Sa'id. He said, how come those people who pray Qiyam al have the freshest faces? Ahsan al They don't sleep much at night, but they still have the freshest faces. You know, when you say nur in his face, and by the way, this is artificial nur for those of you that are watching online. There are two big lights in front of me. This isn't nur from my face. This is nur from these artificial devices here. Okay? Why is it that people have nur in their faces when they pray Qiyam al And Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah said, لِأَنَّهُمْ خَلَوْ بِالرَّحْمَانِ فَأَلْبَسَهُمْ مِنْ نُورِ Because they secluded themselves with the most merciful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Dress them in light. Allahu Akbar. You know, they, they were talking to Allah all night. So Allah dressed them in His light. And so this is something that's very significant. Praying without anyone seeing you. Teaching yourself. Doing away with the love of people's sight. And instead, opting for the love of the, of the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Imam, Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah, 
He says, and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَا ما No one knows what is being prepared for them because they're doing an act of worship while no one sees them. So Allah has prepared a reward that no one has seen. They're doing an act of worship where, that no one sees, so Allah has prepared for them a reward that no one sees. And Anas ibn Malik anhu, just to give us some more perspective on this darkness thing, Anas ibn Malik anhu, he actually said, uh, describing تَتَجَافَى جُنُوبُهُمْ عَنِ الْمَضَاجِعِ those who forsake their beds, crying onto their Lord. He said that this actually referred to the Sahaba between Maghrib and Isha. Okay? A time of praying nawafid, one of the best times to pray voluntary prayers, is between Maghrib and Isha. And Anas ibn Malik was from the group of scholars that actually said that that actually counts as Qiyam al as well. Praying between Maghrib and Isha because it's technically nighttime. A layl from a shari definition, from, a, from, from a, the Islamic perspective, is what is between Maghrib and Fajr. So if a person prays voluntary prayers between Maghrib and Isha in the darkness, they still, they still show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, their love and obviously it's, it's amazing because you look at that time and imagine if you don't have artificial lights how, how much harder is it to wake up at night if you don't have an alarm clock how much harder is it to wake up at night and these people would wake up without any form of help right and that is what the Prophet said to Aisha and who was amazed by the way that he wakes up and he said to her that my eyes sleep but my heart never goes to sleep my eyes sleep and my heart never goes to sleep. And subhanAllah, I don't want to, I have so much material, but, but I, I do want to go off on a tangent just for a moment. I remember seeing a brother at one time who was doing i'tikaf in the masjid in New Orleans. And he was reading Quran as he fell asleep. And he was reading Surah An-Nur. And I was watching when he fell asleep while he was reading, he just all of a sudden knocked out while he was reading. He woke up, and I'm not even exaggerating, he woke up an hour and a half later. And as soon as his eyes opened, he didn't have a mushaf in front of him, he picked up exactly where he left off. And I was looking at him like, whoa. <laughs> SubhanAllah, how did you do that? And I remember what the Prophet said, that, that my eyes go to sleep, but my heart doesn't. Okay, so obviously anticipation builds, uh, builds in the believer. And Rasulullah also constantly connected the nighttime and Qiyam al-Layl to death. Okay, so that's why the Prophet for example, taught us that whenever we go to sleep, we say, Bismik Allahumma amutu wa ahya. In your name, O oh Allah, I die and I'm given life. And whenever we wake up, Alhamdulillah, ladhi ahyana ba'dama amatana wa ilayhi nashur. You praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave you life after you die, and to him is the return. Abu Dirda radiallahu anhu used to actually call upon the members of his household and he used to say, Sallu rak'atayni fi ghulmi layli li ghulmati al-qubur. Pray two rak'ahs in the darkness of the night for the darkness of the grave. And by the way, I guarantee you all, if you pray in the darkness of the night, the darkness of your room, I'm not saying that there's any particular ibadah attached to dark versus turning on your light. I'm saying that you will feel more khushur praying in the darkness of the night. You will feel more tranquility, more sakina uh, if you do that. And the Prophet ﷺ continued to tie uh, salah at night to salah in the graves. In fact, the Prophet ﷺ even said, "Sallu fi buyutikum wala tatakhiduha qubura." Pray in your homes, meaning if it's not fard, if it's not mandatory, the Prophet ﷺ said, "Leave your voluntary prayers for the house and don't turn them into graves." So that's something that the Prophet ﷺ also said. And Subhanallah, I mean, this is this is what we are. You know, we go to sleep at night and we die, but we wake up, and that kind of represents the life of the believer. It shows that you're not heedless. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, "Man qama bi ashri ayat lam yuktab min al ghafilin." Okay, that whoever stands up at night, just praying ten ayats, just the fact that he woke up at night and he prayed ten with ten verses of the Quran, he would not be written with Allah as those who are in a state of ghafla, which is heedlessness, like the Walking Dead. Okay, so you are alive. You're showing Allah subhanahu wa taala just by waking up that you are uh, aware. And Rasulullah also said, it's not for in the hadith of Ibn Umar عنه, that it's not befitting to go to sleep for two nights without having your will prepared. Okay, so having your wasiyah, checking your will at night, right, making sure your will is prepared. Uh, it's actually sinful if you don't. Uh, Jareed ibn Abdullah عنه, also said that one time the Prophet came out to us during the night and the Prophet pointed to the full moon. 
And the Prophet ﷺ said, you are going to see Allah on the Day of Judgment as you see this full moon. You're not going to have any difficulty seeing Him. SubhanAllah, teaching them that they will meet uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ubay ibn Ka'ab radiallahu anhu also says that when one third of the night would pass every night, and this is a hadith in a tirmidhi, the hadith that I just mentioned about the moon is in Bukhari. The Prophet وسلم, would call out and say, Ayyuhan nas, O people, remember Ar-Rajifah. Ar-Rajifah, what Allah refers to in Surah Al-Nazi'ah, is the first blow of the trumpets. And it will be followed by Ar-Radifah, which is the second blowing of the trumpet and will restore life and, and, and mark Yawm al qiyamah So the Prophet وسلم, would remind, he would call out to the people to remind them of the Day of Judgment. Now, what is the status of the one who prays Qiyamul Layl? Again, I can't get into the hows and whens in this class. I'm just trying to introduce the topic as much as I can. <coughs> Number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this person as being from Ibadul Rahman, the slaves of Al Rahman. The, fir- one of the first ways that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes Ibadul Rahman, the servants of the most merciful. They are the ones that spend their nights in sujood, in prostration, and standing in prayer. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in Surah Al-Isra, وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَهَجَّدْ بِهِ نَافِلَةً لَكَ And for, from the night, spend some time in tahajjud, tahajjud. Wake up and spend some time in tahajjud. عَسَىٰ أَنْ يَبْعَثَكَ رَبُّكَ مَقَامًا مَحْمُودًا It may be that Allah will give you a noble station. And subhanAllah, we can find that the Prophet ﷺ specifically used to mention rewards in paradise for those who pray. So we have a hadith in Musnad al-Imam Ahmad from Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu that the Prophet sallallahu said inna fil jannati ghurafa that there are rooms in paradise yara zahiruha min batiniha you could see the inside from the outside and the outside from the inside like transparent palaces like glass palaces and Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu anhu said ya Rasulullah who are they for? And the Prophet ﷺ said, "Liman alan al kalam, the one who softens his speech, wa at'am al ta'am, and who feeds people during the day, and he spends his night praying when nasuniya." Okay, so he spends up wa bat al He spends his night praying while other people are sleeping. There's special. There's a special reward for those people um, on the day of judgment. The Prophet ﷺ also said in a hadith from Abdullah ibn Umar radiAllahu taala anhu. I'm sorry, from Abdullah ibn Mas'ud in At-Tirmidhi. The Prophet ﷺ said, Allah is amazed. Allah is amazed by two men. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is amazed by them. Can you imagine you've, you've gained the attention of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah is surprised by them. Allah is amazed by them. Ajaba Rabbuna. Allah is amazed by them. And the first one is a person who wakes up, who gets up from his comfortable bed مِنْ بَيْنِ حُبِّهِ And away from his family. He leaves his beloved one. He leaves his family. He leaves his comfortable bed. إِلَى salati To stand up and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. مِنْ أَجْلِ Just from his love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is amazed by that person. SubhanAllah. So Allah mentions that person. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the angels, Oh my angels, look at this person. Can you imagine Allah saying to the angels, Check this person out. Look at this person. He jumped from his bed and from between the from from, from, from his family members. You know, he, he left his family, he left his comfort just to pray to me out of love for me and out of desire for that which is with me. I mean it's amazing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is amazed. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu also says in the hadith in Al-Bukhari that the Prophet said, La hasada illa alathnatain. That there is no envy except for two people. One person who Allah has given knowledge of the book to and he recites it during the night time. And a man who Allah has given wealth and he spends it in charity during the day. Okay, so, so that's, that's a, a healthy envy. And Thabit al-Banani, Thabit al-Banani rahimahullah, he said, no person can consider himself a true worshiper without long nights of qiyam and without long days of siyam, long days of fasting. Abdullah bin Abbas عنه, says, I've never met a companion of the Prophet وسلم, that did not pray in the night. The Prophet وسلم, also mentioned for families. Okay, so this is a hadith in, narrated by Abu Hurairah in Abu Dawood. Rahimallahu imra'an, qama min al-layli fa 
وأيقظ امرأته فصلت فإن أبت نضح في وجهها الماء. May Allah have mercy on a man who wakes up in the middle of the night to pray. And he wakes up his wife to pray as well. And if she refuses, he takes a little bit of water. All right? He doesn't, none of this, all right? He doesn't dump a bottle of water on her face. He doesn't use a lota or a grip or whatever you call it in your culture. All right? He just takes a little bit of water and he sprinkles it in her face. Sufyan so al rahimahullah, he used to wet his hand, he used to wipe his, his wife's face with it to wake her up. And so he, Rasulullah also said, وَرَحِمَ اللَّهُ إِمْرَأَةً قَامَتْ مِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَصَلَّتْ وَأَيْقَضَتْ زَوْجَهَا فَصَلَّ فَإِنْ أَبَى نَضَحَتْ فِي وَجْهِ الْمَاءِ May Allah have mercy on a woman who wakes up in the middle of the night to pray and she wakes up her husband to pray. And if he refuses, then she sprinkles water in his face. Even though it was a given when the Prophet mentioned it, that it applies to both. But the Prophet specified just in case a man gets upset when his wife wakes him up. And the Prophet said in another authentic hadith in Abu Dawood from Abu Sa'id, that those men and women who wake up, husbands and wives who wake up praying Qiyamul Layl are written with Allah as الذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات The men and women who remember Allah frequently. They actually have that title with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, mentions it uh, in the Qur'an. Now, the, the reason why I mention these things is to understand that Qiyamul Layl as the scholars understood it is a sharaf, it's, it's an honor. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ said that Jibreel ﷺ said to me, وَاعْلَمْ أَنَّ شَرَفَ الْمُؤْمِنْ قِيَامُهُ بِاللَّيْلِ وَعِزَّهُ اسْتِغْنَاهُ عَنِ النَّاسِ Know that the nobility of a believer is his standing up in prayer at night and his dignity is his being independent of people. Okay? So, the, so it's a sharaf. It's sharaf al-mu'min. The Prophet ﷺ called the nobility of the believer. And so the greatest way to start praying Qiyam layl is to understand Allah will not give it to one who sins during the day. If I try to wake up at night and I feel myself being prevented, that means I'm doing something wrong during the day. That means I'm sinning. And that's why Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah was asked, a man came to him and said, look, I sleep early. And he said, I sleep well. And he said, I take my water jug. I actually put my wudu next to me at night so that I can wake up and pray at night. But I never wake up. And Imam Hassan al-Basri responded to him, and he said, لا تعصه بالنهار يوقظك بالليل Don't disobey him during the day and he will wake you up at night. Allah will allow you to wake up at night, but you can't disobey him during the day. There's no way that you can live a life of haram and then expect to wake up in Qiyamul Layl and, and, and call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and enjoy that intimacy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abu Ja'far, he says that once I went to visit Ahmed ibn Yahya. He said he was crying and I thought someone died in his family because he was crying so much. I thought someone must have passed away. There's no way he's crying that much unless someone has passed away. So he said, I told him, why are you crying so much? And he said, because last night passed and I didn't wake up for a single rak'ah with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how the salaf felt. This is how they felt whenever they missed Qiyamul Layl. And Abu Ja'far said, it's okay. Allah wanted you to rest. Allah was giving you your sleep as a charity. And Ahmed ibn Yahya said, no. He said, by Allah, it's because I committed a sin. And, he said, and Abu Ja'far said, the more I tried to comfort him, the more he would cry. You know, that I missed even one night of Qiyamul Layl. And Imam Sufyan al-Thawri rahimahullah, he says, Wallahi, I was forbidden from praying Qiyamul Layl for six months because of a sin I committed. And subhanAllah, it always drove me crazy trying to figure out what that sin is. I mean, all the books of Tazkiyah mention this narration from Sufyan al-Thawri, that I tried to pray Qiyamul Layl for six months and I was prevented because of a sin. And finally, I found that sin. Someone actually asked him eventually, what was that sin that you committed? And you know what he said? He said, رَأَيْتُ رَجُلٌ يَبْكِي I saw a man crying one time. وَقُلْتُ فِي نَفْسِي أَنَّهُ لَا يَبْكِي لِلَّهِ And I said to myself, he's not crying for Allah. Meaning, I made a judgment on that man's heart and his intention. He said, he's not crying for Allah. So Allah punished me by not letting me pray Qiyam al for six months. SubhanAllah, worry about yourself. A person who's not praying Qiyam al and who's not standing up needs to worry about themselves. The moment that you start passing judgments or gives you a sense of kibir, a sense of pride, is the moment that you're not understanding it properly. And you know, there are many narrations about the status of Qiyam al particularly one of my favorite narrations, and it's for various reasons, is a narration from Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu said that the Prophet ﷺ, you know, used to tell people, if any of you had a good dream last night, then share it with us. So every morning, the Prophet ﷺ would sit with the companions, especially the youth, especially the young people. 
and say, who amongst you had a good dream last night? Share it with us. So Abdullah ibn Umar anhu said, I couldn't wait to have a good dream. I really, really wanted to have a good dream just so I could come to the Prophet and share it with the Prophet So he said, instead, and he said at that time, I was an unmarried young man. He said, I was still a young person. He said, instead, I went to sleep in the masjid of the Prophet and he said, I saw a dream of two angels carrying me to hellfire. And he said, and just as they were about to dump me into hellfire, I cried out to them, A'udhu Billahi min al-Nar. A'udhu Billahi min al-Nar. I seek refuge in Allah from the hellfire. I seek refuge in Allah from the hellfire. And he said, and I saw people, and this is very significant. He said, I saw people inside there that I knew. I saw people there that I knew. But he was worried about himself. A'udhu Billahi min al-Nar. He said, so the angels carried me away and they said, don't fear it. Don't worry about it. So Abdullah ibn Umar said, I woke up and I was too ashamed to go to the Prophet and tell him what I saw. So he said, instead I told my sister Hafsa, anha, the wife of the Prophet can you ask him on a personal level, you know, what, what this dream means. And notice, by the way, Ibn Umar didn't gossip. He never narrated who those people he saw in Hellfire were. He was worried about himself. And this is very profound. This is one of the very profound meanings that's lost in this narration sometimes, this is being narrated. I'm worried about myself. Can you ask the Prophet what this means? And the Prophet responded, and he said, Ni'mar Rajulu Abdullah. Abdullah is a good man. But if only he prayed the Amulah. Meaning he's a great kid, he has everything going for him. And that's the, the Prophet knows that what he's going to say is going to reach him. So the Prophet did not respond and say, What a terrible young man, he never prays Qiyamul. What's his problem? He never prays Qiyamul. The Prophet wanted to comfort him, so he said, Ni'mar Rajulu Abdullah. What a good young man Abdullah is, if only he prayed Qiyamul. So Abdullah ibn Umar, his son Salim, says, After that, Abdullah ibn Umar used to sleep only a little bit of the night. And this hadith is in Sahih Muslim. Another powerful thing here to understand Hafsa herself, what the Allah Ta'ala anha was the only wife that the Prophet ﷺ divorced. And this is narrated in Sunan Abi Dawood with an authentic chain that the, chain that the Prophet ﷺ gave her one talaq, one revocable divorce. And Rasulullah says that Anas, Anas ibn Malik anhu says that the Prophet ﷺ said that Jibreel السلام, came to me. Jibreel actually came to me and said, Raja Hafsa, take Hafsa back because she fasts during the day and she prays at night. So subhanAllah, her prayer at night was the reason why the Prophet ﷺ even took her back in the first place. And subhanAllah, the best way to understand this is that, you know, as Imam ibn Qayyim said, Allah will not let you into his haram if you take part in his haram. It's a very interesting statement. Why? Because the haram is the sanctuary of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah won't let you in if you encroach upon that sanctuary with haram, with those things that Allah made forbidden. So the greatest way is to do away with sin and to understand the role of sin in that regard. As far as the status of Qiyamul Layl itself, and I really haven't covered nearly the material that I plan to cover tonight, but I'll try just to summarize a few things. Uh, Qiyamul Layl, Aisha radiallahu anha actually says that Qiyamul Layl was the first prayer that was legislated as mandatory on the believers. And this is an authentic narration. She said, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed Surah Al-Muzzammal. Surah Al-Muzzammal was the third surah that was revealed. Okay, so Iqra was revealed, and then Surah Al-Mudathir, and then Surah Al-Muzzammal. And Surah Al-Muzzammal, Ya ayyuha al-Muzzammal, qum al-layla illa qalila, nisfahu aw inqus minhu qalila, aw zid alayhi wa ratil al-Qur'ana tawtila. Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the one whose envelope, being the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, stands up for the night, except for a little bit, Half of it, take, take, take some of half, a little less than half or a little bit more, but stand up and pray at night. And so Aisha radiallahu anha says, is initially only the first page of Surah Al-Muzzamman was revealed. Okay? So if you read Surah Al-Muzzamman, Surah Al-Muzzamman is a page and a half. The other half is actually just one ayah. So Allah withheld that one ayah for a few years. So the believers actually had to stand up and pray Qiyamul Layl. It was mandatory on them. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed that last ayah, إِنَّ رَبَّكَ يَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ تَقُومُ أَدْنَى مِنْ ثُلُثَيِ اللَّيْلِ وَنِصْفَ وَثُلُثَهُ وَطَائِفَةٌ مِنَ الَّذِينَ مَعَكَ وَاللَّهُ يُقَدِّرُ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ عَلِمَ أَنْ لَنْ تُحْسُوهُ فَتَابَ عَلَيْكُمْ فَقْرَأُوا مَا تَيَسَّرْ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ إِلَى آخِرِ الْآيَةِ Until the end of the ayah, Allah made Qiyam 
you know, a, a voluntary act. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke of its virtues and standing up at night and praying and reading Quran. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said I am, you know, that He understands some people might be sick, some people might be out you know, working, some people might be out in battle, that everyone has their circumstances. So Aisha radiallahu anha said that ayah made qiyam al-layl voluntary. So it was, it was the first salah that was revealed. Uh, and Sahih Muslim, the Prophet said, and this holds true even now, أَفْضَلُ الصَّلَاةِ بَعْدَ الْفَرَائِدِ قِيَامُ الليل. That the best prayer after the mandatory prayers is Qiyamul Layl. Qiyamul Layl is even better than the Sunan al muakkadah throughout the day. Than the, the, the established Sunan that you pray throughout the day. Qiyamul Layl is actually better. Because the Prophet wouldn't pray those Sunnahs with the exception of Fajr, the Sunnah of Fajr, when he was traveling. But he still would pray Qiyamul Layl. Okay, so Qiyamul Layl maintains a higher status uh, than even that. Abdullah ibn Salam radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he also says that when the Prophet ﷺ came to Medina, he said the people rushed to meet him. And Abdullah ibn Salam was the, was the head Jewish rabbi of Medina. So he said that we all rushed to meet him. So he said I went with them. And his name was Hussein with a saw initially. And he said, I saw his face. And when I saw his face, I said, that face is not the face of a liar. And he said, in the first words I heard from his mouth, meaning the inauguration speech of the Prophet ﷺ in Medina as their new head of state, أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ أَفْشُ السَّلَامُ وَأَطْعِمُ الطَّعَامُ وَصَلُّوا بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّاسُ نِيَامُ تَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةِ بِسَلَامُ O people, uh, spread salam amongst yourselves and feed the poor وَصَلُّوا بِاللَّيْلِ And pray at night while other people are sleeping and you will enter paradise بِسَلَامُ In peace. Now, just to end off, um, and this is very significant. Rasulullah sallallahu said, and, and I want to give some understanding to this hadith. <coughs> Rasulullah sallallahu said in a hadith that's very well known from Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, that a person with his good character, okay, in al mu'min la yudrik, a person with his good character would be able to pass al sa'am al qa'am, the one who fasts frequently and the one who prays frequently, just with good character. And the scholars, they explain that with a very interesting explanation. That Siyam, fasting teaches restraints. Right? Fasting teaches you good character, right? All the hadith about not, use, not having a bad tongue whenever you fast, and that some people only to just diet in Ramadan essentially. And Qiyamul Layl, praying at night teaches Ihsan in character, teaches excellence in character. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned again. وَفِي أَمْوَالِهِمْ حَقٌّ لِلْنِسَاءِ وَالْمَحْرُومِ That they spend during the day and they spend uh, from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon them. So if Qiyam al-Layl doesn't affect your character then, then that Qiyam is worthless because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in an authentic hadith from Ibn Majah, narrated by Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, that there are people who fast and get nothing from their fast except for hunger. And there are people who pray and get nothing from their prayer except for sleeplessness. And the famous hadith that's, that's narrated by Abu Hurairah عنه, that the Prophet ﷺ was asked that night, was asked about a woman who prays and fasts. The narration actually specifies that this woman, تَقُومُ layl, she prays at night and she fasts during the day and she gives charity, but she's abusive with her tongue towards her neighbors. And the Prophet ﷺ said, لا خير فيها هي في النار. There is no good inside of her. She's in hellfire. And then they said, there is another woman who prays just the fara'id. And she gives a small amount of sadaqah, but she doesn't injure one, anyone with her tongue. And Rasulullah responded, Hiya min ahl jannah She is from the people of paradise. So we can't separate the, um, we can't separate the role of character and qiyamul layl. And dear brothers and sisters, just on a last uh, note, and I know I said the last note, but I really want to finish this part because I want you guys to go home understanding this. This is perhaps the most important part of tonight. So all of you rub your eyes because we're going to talk about this. This is Sunnah, even those of you that are home. The Prophet ﷺ, Masaha, uh, he used to wipe his eyes from his sleep when he'd wake up at night. So wipe your eyes and pay attention. In order to truly pray Qiyamul Layl, you have to spend your entire day anticipating Qiyamul Layl. You have to be thinking about it the entire day. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, take a nap, Qaylula. We all love naps, right? Take a nap during the day. Rasulullah said this is an authentic hadith in Al Tabarani. The shayateen do not take naps. Take a nap, the shayateen do not take naps. Qaylula, taking a nap during the day, 
to Qiyamul Layl is what suhoor is to fasting. You know all those those ahadith about how amazing eating suhoor is. And you just think, man, like we get a lot of reward for eating haleem, you know, at 3 a.m. Mashallah, you know, or nihari or whatever it is that you eat, right? We get a lot of ajr for this. What is this about the angels praying upon them? Why is that? And suhoor is actually called in some narrations, you can ask the mashayikh that are here, it's actually called falah, right? Alaysa kadalik, it's called falah sometimes, success. Right? You're winning for eating. You're winning for napping during the day because you're preparing yourself for Qiyamul And that's something the Prophet ﷺ taught us. Also, this is why eating a lot is discouraged. Sufyan al said, a person who eats a lot will not be able to pray Qiyamul Layl. Uh, Wahab ibn Munabbah says that there is no son of Adam dearer to Shaytan than the one who eats a lot and then sleeps a lot. Okay? So your entire day has to be preparing for Qiyamul Layl. And I want you to understand this. The most hated act in the world to Shaytan is Qiyamul Layl. He hates Qiyamul Layl. If he could get you to do anything else from your good deeds, then he would. But he hates Qiyamul Layl. And that's why, and this, this is to disgust you if you decide not to pray tonight. Sahih Muslim, Abdullah bin Mas'ud anhu said that a man was mentioned to the Prophet wasallam who slept through the night without waking up in the morning and the Prophet ﷺ said, That is a man who the shaytan has urinated in his ears. To disgust you. Shaytan tries to keep you away from the Amulet. The entire day, he's already planning and plotting on how to keep you away from the Amulet. Abu Huraira in this hadith is in Al-Bukhari. He says that I used to be in charge of guarding the zakat. I used to guard Baytul Mal. He said, there was a man that I caught stealing three times. And I let him go twice. And then the third time when I caught him stealing the food, I told him that I'm going to take you to Rasulullah And he said, the man panicked when I told him I was going to take him to the Prophet And he said, please don't take me to Rasulullah He said, I will tell you a few words by which Allah will protect all everything. Allah will protect you at night. And he said, when you go to bed, recite ayat al-kursi. Allahu la ilaha illahu al hayyul qayyum. Abu Huraira said, I came to the Prophet Sallallahu and I told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam what happened. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, do you know who that man was? Who was that man? Shaytan. He said, Shaytan. He said, Sadaqa wa huwa kathub. He told you the truth, even though he's a liar. Okay? Ayat al-kursi is to keep him away. The Prophet ﷺ said in another hadith from Abu Hurairah also in Sahih al-Bukhari that every single night shaitan puts three knots on the back of your head. And on every single knot, he reads and he exhales the following words. He says, go ahead and sleep. Shhh. You have a long night ahead of you. Sleep. Go ahead. Some of you already have those knots tied. <laughs> go ahead and sleep. You have a long night ahead of you. And the Prophet ﷺ said, when one wakes up and he remembers Allah, يَذْكُرُ there We're going to have very specific techniques next week from the Prophet ﷺ, how he would do away with this. He remembers Allah, one knot is undone. And then he gets up and he does wudu, another knot is undone. And then when he gets up and prays, another knot is undone. And the Prophet ﷺ says, فَأَصْبَحَ نَشِيطًا طَيِّبًا النفس. So he wakes up energetic and in good spirits. You know, he wakes up feeling good with a good heart, energetic and with a good heart. And if he did not wake up, then he wakes up خَبِيث uh, خَبِيث النفس كَسْلَام He wakes up with, in, in bad spirits and lazy. You know, feeling lethargic the entire day. And subhanAllah, that's for a person who slept the entire night. How do you feel the days that you don't wake up for Fajr? Imagine how much better you'd feel whenever you pray uh, Qiyamul Layl. Uh, there are two more narrations about the Shaytan. The Prophet ﷺ also said from Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu uh, from Sahih al-Bukhari that when night falls, uh, when, when night comes, when the evening comes, stop your children from going out for the shayateen spread out at that time. And when an hour of the night has passed, you can release your children and close the doors and mention Allah's name because Shaytan does not open a closed door. And the Prophet said, close your containers and mention the name of Allah upon them and extinguish your lamps. That's in Bukhari. Another narration, also from Jabir radiallahu anhu in Sahih Muslim. The Prophet said, when a person enters his home 
and he mentions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the time of entering it and while eating his food, Shaytan says, addressing himself, La mabita lakum wa la asha. You have nowhere to stay tonight, nor do you have any food. But the Prophet says, if you enter your house and you don't make mention of Allah, or you don't mention Allah's name when you eat, Shaytan says to himself, you have a place to stay tonight and you have dinner for the night. He's already plotting on you during the night time when you just enter your home and you start to eat your food. And there's so many ahadith, subhanAllah. Abu Hurairah who also said Sahih Muslim that the Prophet said, when you wake up at night from your sleep and you perform wudu, clean your nose three times because the shaytan spends the night in your nose. It's an authentic hadith in Sahih Muslim. And uh, many of them, <laughs> I, I, I won't go, I'll just give you guys one more because do you realize how sometimes you're more easily agitated at night? Right? <laughs> Abu Umama radiallahu anhu narrates, uh, and this is a, a, a very good lesson for husband and wife, by the way. And this hadith is authentic in the Adab al Mufrad, the Tahassan hadith, that Rasulullah said, Shaytan comes to one of you in his bed before his family has covered him, and Shaytan wishes him good night. It's a sarcastic way. And he said, He throws things at you to make you angry with your family. So the Prophet said, When you feel a sense of anger at night, don't become angry with your family. It is part of Amr al-Shaytan, it's from the work of Shaytan. You know, most of the arguments take place at night, right? When people are going to bed at night, and then all of a sudden, you just unleash all of your frustration during the day. Okay, that's an authentic hadith. And there are many, many, many more hadith, but the Prophet ﷺ, hadiths, but the Prophet ﷺ taught us, the Shaytan wants to take us away from Qiyam al If he can achieve nothing else in our lives, then he wants to take us away from Qiyam al Because if we taste Qiyam al then we'll never leave it and his appeal becomes so unattractive and that's why Taraweeh in Ramadan is so easy. Sufida to shayateen. Shayateen are put away. How easy, you know, subhanAllah, a person finds it easy to pray Qiyam al for two hours at night, every night in Ramadan, but he can't even pray Isha on time on the other days. Because Allah takes away that appeal uh, from you. And so again, dear brothers and sisters, your tuition for tonight, and I want you to stay the course, inshallah, with this course. We'll get very specific next week about how the Prophet ﷺ prayed Qiyam al how the Sahaba prayed Qiyam al what the Prophet ﷺ would do at night to wake people up, what he would say when he woke up, what he would say in each position, and things of that sort. Your assignment is to pray two rak'ahs of Qiyam al tonight, and make du'a for me. All right? And inshallah ta'ala, ILF and all of the brothers and sisters behind this. And don't worry about struggling and don't worry, you know, Thabit al-Banani, Rahimahullah, he says, I struggled for 20 years to pray Qiyam al and he said, and I enjoyed it for the next 20 years. It's a struggle. But just hearing about its virtues, I hope, would make us all want to pray. Right, just hearing about its virtues, even tonight, even though we couldn't get very specific tonight, I hope that's enough for us to want to pray. And the Prophet said, مَنْ قَامَ بِعَشْرِ آيَاتِ لَمْ يُكْتَبْ مِنَ الْغَافِلِينَ Whoever stands with 10 ayahs, will not be written um, as those who are heedless. And the Prophet said, and this is authentic hadith from Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As anhu Abu Dawood, وَمَنْ قَامَ بِمِئَةِ آيَةٍ كُتِبَ مِنَ الْقَانَتِينَ And whoever stands up at night and reads a hundred ayat, then he will be written as those who are devout, who stand up, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions الْقَانَتِينَ The devout worshippers. وَمَنْ قَامَ بِأَلْفِ آيَةٍ Whoever stands up with a thousand ayat, كُتِبَ مِنَ الْمُقَنْطَرِينَ then he will be written amongst al muqantirin He'll be written amongst those who pile up treasures of hasanat. I guarantee you, inshaAllah ta'ala, after the fourth class, inshaAllah ta'ala, that you will be able to at least one night, inshaAllah ta'ala, pray it with a thousand ayat. And we'll talk about how, inshaAllah ta'ala. It's not that hard. It's not that crazy. You'll be surprised. Okay? We'll talk about it, inshaAllah ta'ala, uh, next week. Jazakumullah khairan. Khairan. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Uh, inshallah ta'ala, I'll go ahead and I'll take questions from the social stream for those of you that are online, inshallah ta'ala. Jazakumullah uh, khairan to all of you who attended on-site and online. I look forward to the rest of this class, inshallah, the, the remainder of this class. I'm sorry if I spoke a little fast, but again, the material I have is, is, is a lot. So I have to make sure that I can get in, inshallah ta'ala, as much as I can uh, to drive the point home. So I'll go ahead and I'll take questions, inshallah ta'ala, from, from those who are on the social stream, inshallah. Uh, is Qiyam al better than Witr? Witr is Qiyam al -Lil. Witr is Qiyam al -Lil. There's an authentic narration from Ibn Abbas 
that the Prophet وسلم, he said, pray in the night, even Salatul Layl, even if it's one rak'ah. And I'll ask those who are getting up just to be as quiet as you can when getting up, inshallah, because of the recording. He said, pray at night, even if it's one rak'ah. So witr is a form of qiyam al layl. Okay? I'll ask those who posted questions earlier on in the class to post them again. Um, let's see. Okay, actually, while the questions are being posted, you guys can ask questions, inshallah, while I'm waiting on those questions. Yeah, Adam. Uh, you said there's a hadith, a hadith of uh, Abdullah ibn Umar, or Abdullah ibn Saud, that Allah is amazed to two people. Uh, you said the one who wakes up and wakes up and leaves his family. Is that the, the other one, one is the one in the battlefield who doesn't retreat even when he's alone. So even when it's a few people left in the battlefield. Yes. Yeah, you quoted an ayah from Surah Al-Isra. Is this uh, referring to the Prophet ﷺ? Yes, Maqam al Mahmud is to the Prophet ﷺ. The station uh, in Surah Al Isra is to the Prophet ﷺ. However, as Ibn Abbas said, it shows that the elevation of the Prophet ﷺ comes through his qiyam and therefore the elevation of anyone else comes through his qiyam and is standing up at night. Because Asa Rabbuka, it may be that your Lord will give you this high station. station. It was through the qiyam of the Prophet ﷺ. Uh, any sisters questions inshallah from you guys? I think there was some buffering, so they're a little behind online. So, yeah. Well, I, I thought you mentioned the Hajjit was waking up to pray and Qiyamulayl was staying up to pray. Qiyamulayl includes every form of dhikr throughout the night. Oh, but whether you're waking up is a way or... Yeah, Qiyamulayl, if you pray right now, you get Qiyamulayl. Oh, okay. Okay, you pray with it, it's Qiyamulayl. Tahajjud is sleeping and then waking up. Fighting yourself to wake up at night. And so tahajjud was better. Obviously, because that's the sunnah of the Prophet. Okay. However, start with qiyam and then move on to tahajjud, inshallah. That's what we'll do. Yeah. So do you have to have intention to wake up and go to sleep? Do you have to have the intention to wake up and go to sleep? Um, no, but the beauty of it is that if you, wake, if you go with the intention and you don't wake up, then you get the reward. I have some questions here. Uh, explain the part about Qiyam in prayer relating to Qiyam in the grave. The darkness of the grave is what you should be thinking about when you're standing up in the darkness of the night. That's what I meant. So the, the statement from Abu Dhar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, uh, which was to pray two rak'ahs in the night for the darkness of the grave, is that the Prophet and by the way, the Prophet actually used to visit Al-Baqir at night. He used to visit the graveyard at night. I don't recommend that now, obviously, because something can happen to you. Um, but the Prophet used to actually visit the Baqir at night. There's actually a long narration about Aisha radiallahu anha wondering why he slipped out at night and following him to the, to the graveyard at night. So to remind yourself of death. Um, for, for women that are unable to pray, would making dua during the last third of the night do for qiyam? Yes. Yes. Wake up and do dua, dhikr. It doesn't have to be salah per se. And plus the Prophet said, that if a person has the habit of doing some form of ibadah and then it's cut off for some reason, that they would get the full reward even when they don't do it. So if it's your habit uh, and that's the only thing that stops you, uh, then it's not going to, to matter. Uh, someone's asking about the statement of Sufyan al -Thawri. How did he know that that was the sin that stopped him from praying Qiyam al It's just his taqwa. It's his, con his God consciousness, his piety. He recognized he did something wrong. And this is from, it's, it's important to associate sometimes when you're being restrained from ibadat to actually try to identify sins that could be holding you back uh, from that ibadat. Anyone from the live audience, sisters? Yes, go ahead. Is one allowed to pray after praying with it? Is one allowed to pray after praying with it? We'll go into detail with that, inshallah. Yes, the short answer is yes. But we'll go into detail of, it, of that answer, inshallah. Yeah. How many rak'ah for Qiyam al-Layl would you... Oh, don't, don't open the rak'ah and the how many rak'ah question. <laughs> yes. We'll be here all night. <laughs> no, no, that's part of... like eight rak'ah used to be... That's part of the next lecture. Okay. Because next next lecture, we're going to study ex how the Prophet Sallallahu all the narrations about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's Qiyam, inshallah. Uh, other questions? Go ahead. Yes. It, it continues to be extended during the night. So it's, 
extended during the day for those seeking forgiveness for what they did in the night, and it's extended during the night for those seeking forgiveness for what they did during the day. The point is, is that Allah is always accepting tawbah. That's the point of the narration of the hadith of the Prophet. All right. Uh, whoa, I got 20 questions <laughs> that just popped up. All right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, all right, I see. What is the name of the third surah revealed? Surah Al Muzammil. Is waking up in the last third of the night considered to be Qiyam? Yes, it's Qiyam and Tahajjud. Okay. Um, does Fajr fall into Qiyam al -Layl? No, because Fajr is from the Fara'at, it's from the mandatory things. However, the Sunnah of the Fajr, according to a great number of scholars, does fall into Qiyam al -Layl. And we'll actually study the wording of some of those narrations which indicate that. That if a person prayed the Sunnah of Fajr at their home, as the Prophet ﷺ did, then it would be a part of Qiyam al -Layl. Okay? Alright, I'm going to go ahead and end now, inshaAllah ta'ala. Jazakumullah khayran to all of you who attended on-site and online. Barakallahu li wa lakum, Qur'an al-Hakim. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us all to be from Al-Qanateen wal Muqantareen, those who stand and are devout at night. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ikhlas and sincerity and ihsan. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullah khayran, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ashadu wa la ilaha ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khayran. Jazakumullah khayran. Jazakumullah I told you guys you're going to need to take notes. Saw some of you just staring at the ones that were falling asleep or the ones that weren't taking notes. Um, I, th I think next week is Salat and Aisha going to be 7.30? Just continue to 7.45. If, if Aisha next week is 7.30, then what I'll do is while I'm waiting for the people to start at 8 o'clock online, inshallah, I'll take you guys' questions in that, in that time, inshallah. Time, if we have a little bit of time. Jazakumullah. I only covered half of my...